video. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And now comes the audio in three, two, one. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show, Dr. D. How are you doing today? Well, I am uh, doing very well. Uh, however, uh, keeping track of uh, clock times and things like that with our special guest is kind of tough. Well, yeah, Tokyo. We're talking to talking to Tokyo. Tune in, Tokyo. It's actually hello, tomorrow. hello. <laughs> it's actually tomorrow there. That, that's uh, right. Don't confuse me. I've got. I get. Confu- <laughs> I get confused just by giving out my name. Okay. Don't don't confuse me too much here, Doctor D. Sorry. sorry, but I know you're <laughs> dealing with some technical difficulties over there. I keep hearing, no, shoot, <laughs> and he's using different words no, than that. I'm just so. talking to the computer. <laughs> Those darn computers. I know there was a little bit of technical difficulty in Tokyo today too. It's five a.m. there, and yeah. And the the wonderful, beautiful voice you may, you just heard. Let's see if we're going to play a little trivia game here. Uh, he has over forty two million listeners, Doctor D, over the years. And and so, do you recognize the voice that you just heard? It was just a snippet. <laughs> I would actually uh, introduce him here properly. Yeah, please. Just a moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't have to play the game, but if you do win, okay. I've got a million dollars for you. If you can tell me who it is, who he is, who you just heard. Um, yeah, Tokyo, uh, 5 a.m. there. Our special guest joins us from Tokyo. I'd love to see what it looks like at 5 a.m. in Tokyo. It's cool. dark. Uh, it's, it's dark. dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> well, I, although I will say I'm not sure I agree with that because a lot of pictures I've ever seen of Tokyo, even at night, it's still darn it's bright. Still beautiful. they got lights everywhere so, yeah. in the city. So beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but he's got his curtains closed behind him, so we can't uh, see if you're watching on YouTube here. All right, let me get right to it, Dr. D. We are learning from a master today. We've got one of the master broadcasters on the show, and I'm so excited to get right to him. But first, let me tell you a little bit about him, uh, introduce him to my audience. They probably already know him. My special guest today, mm-hmm. in case you didn't guess, is Mike in Tokyo. The million dollars is now off the table. Darn. <laughs> the widely, Mike in Tokyo, he's the widely popular and most listened to DJ in Tokyo. I don't care if that's true or not. I'm going to say it. I, I think it is. He's been introducing the world to the best indie music for over 35 years on the FM radio broadcasting to over 42 million people. But Mike Rogers doesn't only introduce and play punk and indie music and understand the music indie scene, he was in it. He was the lead singer of the 70s LA punk band, The Rodders, under the pseudonym Nigel Nitro. Great name. A few years ago, he left terrestrial radio and began broadcasting on digital radio in 19 countries and on over 55 stations. He's interviewed everyone from the White Stripes to Yoko Ono. Mike in Tokyo. Rogers is a director, a producer, he's a writer, and also, as I mentioned, the FM radio host, who in 2006 became the first foreigner in Japanese history to hold a senior position at a major Japanese broadcasting station when he was appointed the general manager at TV Tokyo's Inner FM radio channel. Since then, he has built a career as a radio and TV host, a producer, and a writer, in Japan with films including Ghost Roads, a Japanese rock and roll ghost story. And the documentary, and, and uh, help me out here, Mike, I, w- I don't want to butcher, but my Japanese pronunciation isn't so great. Matsuchio? Matsuchio. Matsuchio, Good. Life of a Geisha. Yeah. And Ghost <laughs> Roads, a uh, Japanese rock and roll ghost story, which uh, it world premiered at the Rain Dance Film Festival in 2017. And Mike is also a jury member for life at the Rain Dance Film Festival, making him the first person from Japan to ever serve as a jury member in the Rain Dance Film Festival, his- film festival history. He has created and co-hosted many legendary programs in Japan, including Ninja Slayer from Animation's The TV Show, Channel G and Good Morning Garage. And Mike, I love this quote that you that you say. Uh, you, you say I, I make rock and roll stuff. Welcome, yeah, Mike. Uh, 
Mike in Tokyo. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. We're so happy to have you here. Thank, thank you for inviting me. I'm so, I'm so. I listened to your introduction of me, and I think like God, I'd like to, I'd like to meet that guy. I wonder if he has any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, such is the life of the creator, right? You're always producing, you're always creating, and uh, yeah. You know, that's the, but you put out, I was just thinking, you know, and you and I spoke about this a couple of days ago where it's so the, the, the um, perspective that you have from behind a console, how many people out there listen to Mike in Tokyo on, you know, now over 55 stations, um, you know, all the people that you've touched over the years with not only the music that you play, let's say from the artist perspective, that the artist gets you a song and you play it and it's now out on radio and they, they get, they gain an audience and they gain listeners, but also how many times when you're just mindlessly driving or you're mindlessly doing something and you, and a good song comes on that Mike and Tokyo played or introduced to you and it has imprinted on you and become a part of your soundtrack in your life. Uh, we, we are so lucky today, Mike, because we, uh, and, and to the listeners, the, the music that you're going to hear on the show is all hand curated by Mike in Tokyo. He, he created this playlist, especially for us and the show and for the listeners. So I'm so happy to, uh, when we go to music, uh, the music at the breaks here, Mike, um, I thank you for the soundtrack. And, and we'd love to talk a little bit about each artist and, and why you chose the song. Oh, that's great. You, did you like the songs? Oh, I did a lot. You know, oh. I had two favorites and they're both by the females, but female artists. Uh, and I'll mention them when we get there. But I did what I really was stuck was stuck out to me was that it really feel, felt like real rock and roll, like like maybe in the 60s or, you know, and on where it was just this real raw rock and roll and, and great Great beats, melodies. Uh, I couldn't understand the lyrics, but I could get the, the gist. <laughs> uh, well, let's start. Let's go back a little bit, Mike. Where did you grow up? Um, well, I was born in San Diego, and um, most of my life I lived in, you know, kind of Ventura, mm -hmm. actually. So I've been to Santa Barbara, Isla Vista, Goleta, George's, down on State Street, many, 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 many times. Yeah. But most. Most of my childhood, my father was in the Marine Corps, and most of my childhood was just spent moving around the United States. So I never went to the same elementary school twice. And at that time, I really hated it, but I realized, well, many years ago, that it was actually good because if you get stuck in you know one place and you've known all your friends for 12 years or whatever, it, it won't make you what he's so, so outgoing. Mm -hmm. So if, if you move every year, then you just have to be outgoing, going, um, <laughs> even though your new friends think you're weird. <laughs> what are the, some of the, what, what are the, um, where have you used that? Uh, the, you know, the, just have you have, you're basically a fish out of water all the time and, and you need to adapt to your new environment. How have you used that in this career, this well, I don't what know if it's career that you built. It it's called used used or um, borrowed. When I was like in I think into ninth ninth grade, we moved back to California from Minnesota, and um, I guess that uh, midwestern schools are way the level of education is way above California. So I went from being a C student in Minnesota to being the smartest kid in school. <laughs> <laughs> and it was weird. And um, one day I was, I think my first day in class, so I was in a class with a bunch of kids, didn't know anyone. And the teacher says, um, you know, whatever, blah, blah, Miss Mike, Mike Rogers, what do you think about that? And I said, beats me. <laughs> because that was the lingo, the lingo kids in Minnesota use. And uh -huh. everyone started laughing at me and they're like, beat yourself. <laughs> I thought, okay, this is going to be difficult. <clears throat> so that was but, your... Yeah, but it, it's just easy. It was easier to get it into television and radio because... Um, you just have to overcome your shyness and 
when it comes down to the audition time or whatever, you just have to do it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I, I place myself, okay, this is a movie and I'm the main character in the movie. And in the movie, what would the main character do? He would go out there and be like, yeah, how's it going, everyone? <laughs> Beats me. And, uh, oh, you know, and that's what he would do. In fact, my first, very first television show job in Japan, I had been in Japan for one month. I couldn't speak a word of Japanese, and I became a regular on a TV Tokyo, which is a big network here. TV Tokyo Morning Kids Show. And I couldn't speak a word of Japanese. And um, it's a long story, but when I went to the audition, there were other guys auditioning for the, the part, and they had an English teacher at this on this show. And all these guys were really stiff, like you can imagine an English teacher would be. And then it came to my turn, and I thought, okay, how would Pee Wee Herman do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept going, hey, kids, how's it going? We're going to, you know, and, and then I got the job. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I was so shocked that I got the job, and I thought, God, I love Japan. <laughs> this is, <laughs> place is great. I mean, where can you go? You can't even speak the language. You've been there for a month, and you get a regular TV show. Wow. What is your background? What is your ethnicity? I'm half Japanese. Okay. And then why did you decide to move to Japan after growing up in Ventura and around the Southern California and around the, around the country? Oh, uh, well, after I graduated from college, um, I married my college girlfriend who, who was a Japanese girl. And, um, I was actually a stockbroker and I, I worked at Prudential Beige, and um, I was always a top five salesman, like, you know, 24-year-old guy, really selling well and making a lot of money. And one day I went back to the office, and I don't know if I should really mention this, but I went back to the office, and everybody was having a party. They were drinking in the office. There was like 60 guys there drinking, and they saw me, and they were like, Mike, come on in and have a drink. And I was like, what, what are you guys celebrating? And they said, we won a war. Vietnam is over. Because these are all ex-military guys. Mm. And um, I was like, what What war? And they were like, we invaded Granada. And <laughs> I was just like, what? And I, it really surprised me. And I didn't really even back then really watch TV or read the newspapers either. So I went to the local library and I found British newspapers like the, what's it called, The Guardian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were really railing on the United States for invading Granada, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and um, I thought, okay, I don't want to grow up and be like you guys, you know, all everyone really pot-bellied and, and drunk and fighting with their wives all the time. I want to live. So I asked my wife, do you want to move back to Japan? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, let's go. And I sold my house and everything. My parents were pissed off at me. <laughs> and then, but I thought I'd come to Japan and live here for two years, you know, check it out. And then, then after that, we'll move to Italy because I had so much, I was so cocky and had so much confidence. I used to tell people I can sell ice to Eskimos. Oh, you know. funny. My father used to say that to me. <laughs> it must be a radio thing. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so so that, that, that's why I moved here. Well, going back to your life in the United States as a, as a, a Japanese American, uh, was, what was the culture like? I know, we, you know you're not real political and, and that's not what this is about, but it, put us in that mindset. As a kid growing up, was it, uh, you know, because I look at some of the stuff that's happening now in the United States with you know asian americans and uh, it's just so sad that i know that that out of world war ii and and all of that it was a tough time was it tough when you were growing up for you as a as a kid or do you, well, you seem like you have a lot of self-confidence and that and that you really loved your experience it sounded like growing up but was it tough at all okay you guys are gonna think i'm weird when i was a kid i believed that and i'm serious i was superman 
because I was half Japanese and half hillbilly. <laughs> My dad was from North Carolina, mm. and I, I'm serious. I believed I was the Superman, and I kind of like a Calvin and Hobbes thing. I had made my mind up that uh, I was the super race, and there were very, very few half Japanese people. And, and there's yeah, there's more know. in Japan, but there were very few half Japanese people. And I really believed because of the two cultures that I, I could understand both cultures, and that made me. I don't know if the word what well, just made me a superhuman and I mm -hmm. hope that kids all kids who are half half Mexican half uh, uh, American you know half this half that they all believe that and they they take the two cultures meld them together and use the best of of each culture and you know it's really convenient like because like when I was in high school I never really got picked on you know, I went to a high school in Ventura and I never got picked on by the white kids and I never got picked on by the Hispanic kids because the Hispanic kids thought I was Hispanic and the white kids thought I was white. So everybody would leave me alone. I never got had to get in fights. I just sit on the fence. Um, okay, yeah, I'm a, I like you guys, you know, whatever. <laughs> and never get in fights, but I, I, I love the perspective that you found power. Well, you used your imagination as a kid, and I think we should all continue to do that. You still are. You're, you're creating great films and uh, writing scripts, and, and you're hosting and, and introducing the world to music constantly. Um, you're a very creative guy, and you, you've been that way, it sounds like, your whole life. And I, and I love the message that you put out there. Um, you know, to find your power and, and use what you have. And we're all half something, right? Or we're all yeah, that's something. right. We're all, you know, but uh, I just wondered, I, I thought you might have a, neat, a unique perspective. Did did the music, which what type of music um, appealed to you first and probably fed that power? I imagine you, you were in a punk band, right? I mean, that yeah, well, power in itself. So I was, you know, um, 10 years old in 1966. So what I really loved was my parents would take, take us somewhere in the car and they'd say, you have to go with us too. And I would say, I, would, I was good at negotiating back then. I would tell my parents, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with you guys, but I get to sit in the front seat and I get to control what we listen to on the radio. And hmm. they would say, okay. So I would <laughs> just be zapping the radio the whole time and all of a sudden I... I'd find a station that's playing like the seeds, you know, pushing too hard, pushing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is it, this is it. And my dad, <laughs> who loved country, would be driving the car and he'd be just this, just sick, disgusting music. And I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> and then, um, then the monkeys came along and I really liked the monkeys. And I was, like I said, I was a kid and I was under the impression that rock stars were always they all lived in the same house, you know, the same band. Mm -hmm. They all wore the same clothes and everything. So when the monkeys broke up, that really, that just devastated me. And then. I was, so we I, were talking about this. Uh, I'm just going to drop it in there. Uh, Sarah Jones, Davy Jones' daughter was a, a good friend of mine. In fact, she, she, after we got off the phone call, I started thinking about it. She, we had a restaurant here in town, Santa Barbara called Arch Rock Fish, and she did all the interior decorating. She's an interior decorator for the restaurant but yeah as a high school kid i knew the monkeys mainly just going over to their house at, at when they were out of town <laughs> sarah would throw big parties and it's right there behind them up the road from the bottle shop do you remember that in montecito the bottle shop that's been there forever on coast village road do you Who, remember me? that yeah do you remember that no Close i don't the remember shop? That. no no anyway the monkey yeah, the monkeys yeah they were that's, so that was one of your, and what drew you to being a DJ? Was it just, I am a DJ oh, in the car. I'm going to continue this. I love it. Well, so after I was in the punk band and the punk band broke up and let me just touch on that just for a moment. We, I played in the punk band for about a year and um, in, uh, I think it was 1979, the nuns called us and said, Mike, you know, you come up and open for us in San Francisco. 
And I was like, sure, of course. You know, and the guitarist was, of course, we'll, we'll go, we'll go play. Then we told those two idiots in the band, the drummer and the bassist, we're going up to San Francisco to play with the nuns on this such and such a date. And they said, no, we can't go because we promised our friends we would go surfing that day. I was like, what? <laughs> you live in California, you can go surfing every day. <laughs> I mean, what? How, many, how often can you play with the nuns? So, but that was my screw up because I should have fired those two idiots and kicked them out. <laughs> and just and gone went, anyway, huh? And then, and then went up to, to play in San Francisco with the nuns, but I didn't do it. So I, that's one of my bit, life's big regrets. Hmm. Well, it doesn't sound like you've got too many, though, uh, Mike. I mean, you've, well, well, you've built. Yeah, no, I got lots of regrets. <laughs> so then after that, um, the band broke up. I, I really loved Hollywood and I loved Sunset Strip and everything. And I wanted to stay there. So I got a, a part. Uh, I got a part time job with Rodney Bingenheimer. I just went went up to him one day and said, hey, Rodney. Thanks for playing our records. Can I be your assistant? You don't have to pay me or anything. I'll, I'll, I'll drive you around and I'll clean up your records and do everything like that. And he said, okay. Hmm. And I did the same thing. Actually, you don't know this, Jeremiah. I did the same thing with uh, Pee Wee Herman. And I worked in Pee Wee Herman's mailroom for a very short time, but nobody, I, I thought that would be Hollywood too, but it was, no, it was just like a closet. <laughs> And sorting mail, so I thought, nah, I don't like this job. Yeah, some of those production offices are not that great. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty, pretty shabby. Well, so, uh, but go ahead. I'm sorry. So Rodney introduced me to everybody: the Ramones and Blondie and Clem Burke and Phil Spector and people like that. And uh, that's how, basically, how I started into radio. Hmm. Hmm. Because I thought. You know, the problem with being in a band is you have to depend on these three or four other guys. But being a DJ, you don't have to depend on anybody but yourself. And that's the best, you know. If you screw up, it's your fault. If you, you succeed, it's, it's, it's because of you, you know. And it's just better that way. Relying on other people is not a good thing, generally speaking. That I think. is true but sad, isn't it? Yeah, well, Mike, uh, Mike in Tokyo, we're going to take you, we're going to ask you to do what you do so well right now. Tell me about this song. Did you get the playlist in order that I sent you today? Uh, Linda, Linda. Oh, this um, is a band. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. You want me to introduce them? Yeah, yeah. Introduce them. And why did you choose them? And then we'll, we'll go to break and we'll play them and we'll, we'll come back. All right. Well, I don't have to sound like a DJ, do I? <laughs> No, it might be kind of fun. <laughs> well, so they get you to do it one time before we're all we're all finished here. Yeah. All right. Well, um, okay. The Just Linda, tell us about yeah the band. Yeah. The Linda Lindas are coming to Japan in Summer Sonic. They're going to play the live stage, and uh, the Linda Lindas got their name from this band, uh, which is one of the most famous Japanese rock bands in history, and they're called the Blue Hearts. And this is Linda Linda. Great. All right. We're going to we're going to listen to that now. Thank you. Mike in Tokyo is our special guest today. Let me give you some uh, he's doing some good stuff right now. And let me give you out some information here. First, where you can find him, you can find him on Facebook or Instagram on Facebook at Mike in Tokyo Rogers. Excuse me on Instagram. Or Mike, right. Mike, Mike Rogers show. OK, I, Mike I Rogers know. show on Instagram. Great, yeah. And that's all one word, one word, Mike Rogers show. That's uh yeah that's that's on Instagram right Mike yeah, and yeah Facebook. And Facebook. okay and Mike in Tokyo Rogers one is your handle on Facebook is that is that uh, is it yeah I that's what it comes up um let me do that one from again from the top again so we're because we're talking through it three two one. um Mike so let me write let me change Mike in Tokyo Mike in Tokyo show is Instagram. Mike in Tokyo Rogers. Oh, that's what I had. Yeah. You, changed, you told me to change it. Well, it doesn't matter, J Jeremiah. It's a unique name. So if you just write in Mike in Tokyo, Let it'll Let me make appear. sure, though. I want to make sure we give yeah. them the right stuff because we want them to follow you in if they're not already. Um, let me look it up real quick. Mike in Tokyo. 
So I got Mike in Tokyo Rogers, and that one comes up, but it only has a couple posts on it. So is that the right one? I don't know. <laughs> but you, when I mentioned that, you <laughs> you corrected me. What do you think the correct one should be? I think it just if you just put in uh, show Mike nothing Mike Rogers Tokyo or whatever, you'll find me. Okay. We have to we have to raise the hurdle here a little bit. Yeah, we get. Don't it. tell people exactly how to find it. <laughs> Make it fun, right? Yeah. Well, the one that comes up is uh, Mike in Tokyo Rogers. So should yeah. I give that out? Okay, I'll give yeah. that out. Okay. Just so we don't confuse them too much, and then they can dig a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'll do. I'll start that from the top again, Richard. All right. You're ready. Three, two, one. Here's where you can find find Mike in Tokyo Rogers on Instagram. At Mike in Tokyo show. Oh, sorry. That's the one you, I, I erased my old one. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not right. I erased my old one and then read it. I think we're not live, Mike. Do I don't do it live? <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Here's where you can find Mike in Tokyo Rogers on Instagram at Mike in Tokyo Rogers and on Facebook at Mike in Tokyo Rogers one. Just type it in. You'll find it. And you can find Mike Rogers on these digital radio stations, the Mike Rogers show in uh, Japan, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m., Radio Candy Radio Station and Core. You can also find him on WFMU New Jersey, voted the best radio station in the USA by Rolling Stone Magazine. Second place, KZSB 1290 and 96.9 FM, right, Dr. D? That's right. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Second place, we're going for number one. And um, Lux Radio in Spain. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, upcoming, I just want to give out a couple websites here. Check out the Japan Indies Film Festival at filmfreeway.com backslash Japan Indies Film Festival. And I wanted to uh, just say hi to all our new listeners. We're on a new station, altradio.rocks. Check it out. We'll be on next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I've heard of that station. I believe actually. you're on that one as well. We're I am. Now, we're oh. now co. What do we call ourselves? We're we're co programmers. There you go. <laughs> we're brothers. I like that one. <laughs> uh, the station supports indie artists, and there's a new upcoming film, Meet the Pumps. I don't have anywhere to send you on that one, but we're going to talk about it in a few minutes here. We'll be right back with more Mike in Tokyo Rogers. Claire, stand by. Now, Mike, do you usually just go by Mike in Tokyo or do you do the full thing, the full name? I just go by Mike because, Mike. you know, um, Mike, if I tell a Japanese person my name is Mike, they think microphone because uh -huh. there is no Mike name. So I've told people before that my name was Mike Rogers and I've actually had a really famous producer say to me, is that a, is that a stage name? <laughs> I'm like... Why, what do you mean? But I didn't find out for a couple of years that Rogers is the name of a discount department <laughs> store in Japan, like a really cheap, like, oh. game type of store. So Mike Rogers is like, I'm the discount DJ in Tokyo, you know? Uh huh. The only discount DJ. <laughs> I like it. Well, <laughs> well that's, that's in the uh, YouTube interview now. That'll be like a bonus. bonus oh, okay. I'm there. <clears throat> I like that little background. Um, okay, so when we come back, the song is. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm so sorry for butchering your language. Camino, Tokyo made. Is that correct? Camino. Camino. Titty Twister. Titty Twister. Yeah. So that's the <clears throat> song we're coming back Kimi with. Kimi no Toko Made. Oh, you know Made that? Toko Made. Okay. Yeah, what that is? That is um, all she's singing about is, come on over to my house and. Let's play. And she's coming over by riding a bicycle. Okay. Save that because we're going to come back from that. Okay. And I'll have, and then 
when I when I come back, I'll ask you about that. So describe it. There we go. Three, two, one. You're live. Hey, hey! Welcome to back to the Jeremiah Show. We've got Mike in Tokyo. He's joining us from Tokyo, Japan. He's the number one DJ uh, in my book and yours as well. Uh, for over 42 million listeners, he's on 55 radio stations. And man, this uh, is fascinating story. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Thank um, you. Now we just brought we, you brought us back with your personal playlist here for the Jeremiah yeah. show. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the song and why you chose it, chose it. Um, you know, the, song, the song we just, the song we just heard was, um, Titty Twister. They're from Kyushu and listen carefully because they sound like Led Zeppelin a lot. And, um, the song is called Kimi no Tokomade, which means going over, <laughs> going over to your house. And <laughs> They sing about going over to your house to do whatever the young kids do. <laughs> but, uh, she's riding a bicycle. Okay. <laughs> so you know, it's it's not about adult. It's not an adult subject. Very teen, <laughs> teenage teeny bopper stuff, but it's not teeny bopper sound. They're they're pretty heavy. Yeah, I like it. I like I like all the stuff you sent me. I've been. Um, turn up the stereo when we come back, right, Doctor D in your car, and uh, yeah, crank it up. Out. Yeah, so we've got. I mean, it's so such a pleasure to talk to you, and such an honor to talk to you, and have you on the show um, for what you do. I mean, how many people out there do what you do? Not, I mean, you probably have some sort of a number, but there there are not a lot. And then to make it to the top where you did, tell us, take us now to Japan. You've moved back to Japan with your wife. You plan on being there two years, maybe moving to Italy after that. Yeah. Uh, first, before you tell us your career, explain the Japanese FM station system, if you could. Okay, so in Japan, and I think I think this has something to do with World War II. But for example, in Tokyo, there's 42 million people living here, but there's only five FM stations. You probably have more FM stations mm. in Santa Barbara mm, than they crazy. do in Tokyo. So. So to be a, to be a DJ here in Tokyo is kind of a big deal. So um, I was on the uh, rock station, so to speak. So when famous musicians would come to Japan, and if they were alternative or indies, I got to meet them all. So that's how I met like the the White Stripes and um, Elvis Costello and uh, Yoko Ono and just people like that because we were considered the cool station you know we didn't play traditional japanese music and uh, japanese teeny girl teeny bopper pop we didn't play that kind of music so um it's totally different here in in the southern island of japan the big southern island there are only two stations so for that's 130 million people there and there's only two fm stations so if you're a re radio DJ, you're at the top of the celebrity list there, really, right? Everybody listens to you. Well, in theory, mm -hmm. in theory, but, um, you know, FM radio nowadays has a really kind of tank and um, there's no sponsors. And th the problem is, is like you guys, you, you two guys, you're running your, your show You've got people all over the world listening to this show, and um, sponsors don't have money to support a station that has a hundred people working at it. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you guys can do your show, or somebody like Joe Rogan can do his show, and maybe he's got five or six guys working on it. But you know, a sponsor has only X amount of money, and the TV stations or the radio stations want need to charge huge amount of money for a sponsorship but they can't afford it, but they can, they can pay like one tenth the price and get a bigger bang out of their buck by, by going through internet radio, digital radio, or going through these podcasts. And it's just smart, smart business. And that's why the big TV stations and, you know, even American stations, whatever, they're in trouble because they have so many yeah, staff. So much overhead, so much staff, yeah, so much labor. Yeah. Now, uh, 
you know, I just want to put out there since you brought it up that it, we are, you know, we're still accepting sponsors. You can still get in. <laughs> <laughs> so let me know. <laughs> Always looking for sponsors, good sponsors. I think you did made the perfect pitch, Mikey. And if you ever want an extra job in selling advertising, let me know. <laughs> oh, thank you. but really, um, no. I I really I really think so. It's like, you know, um, st- somebody like let's say Toyota. Toyota, that's a big company, a big multinational company. They can afford to buy commercials on the Super Bowl or whatever. But for the money that they spend on that Super Bowl commercial, they could. They could buy ad space on the Jeremiah show for probably two years and get much more bang, consistent, because that's the point, being in people's heads all the time, consistent advertising and get a lot of coverage. And they would probably save, uh, you know, 75% of their budget for, the, for that. Toyota, call me. All right. So <laughs> let me ask you, Mike, going back to the music, what is, uh, I'll take Toyota, I'll take anybody. Um, what is, what should we understand in the Western world about, is it Japanese music specifically? I know the soundtrack that you sent me was a lot of Japanese music, but what is, what should we understand about the music well, scene and, and Japanese music in particular? Okay. What you mentioned a little while ago, like, other people who are doing this in Japan I'm the only one who's doing this and I think it has to do with like I said I I don't know if I said this uh, Japan doesn't have internet radio no and that's that's because of that's because of jazz rack there's stations that say they're from Japan but they're actually broadcasting from London Hmm. so so and and you know I I broadcast too I mean, I'm on a Japanese FM station, but I broadcast too from most of these stations are being, you know, the the transmitter is, or the the internet is in a different country. So um, what I do is I basically play Japanese indies, punk, junk, garage, and stuff like that, because even in Japan, no one is playing that. Because, like I said, there's only five FM stations in Tokyo, right? So they're all playing Justin Bieber or Bieber. I don't even know what the guy's name is. Yeah, and, the second one's right. Yeah, <laughs> don't go by Bieber. That's, that's what they play. And so, even in Japan, the the Japanese indies punk garage bands they don't get any airplay at all. So there are a lot of DJs around the world who are doing indies music. Uh, just like you mentioned on alt radio and um the one thing that sets me apart from them is i'm playing music that nobody's ever heard from japan and these bands are really really good yeah they are how is that scene that's that's a that's a, a music scene that you're tapping into how how is it received um well you know the core fans the hardcore fans the kids they love it and in in Japan, I hate to say this, but like Japan is, I like to think like Japan is maybe 30 or 40 years behind the United States in a lot of ways. And um, the music is definitely like that. So that's why you said, you know, very rock and roll type yep. of thing. So the bands that are out now, they're all young. They're all in their 20s. They're really pretty, they're really handsome, they're slim, they're trim, and they just have the look of rock and roll. You know, I, I like I like the rock and roll look from the Gene Vincent days and stuff when everyone was skinny. It, that, that's the way I believe rock and rollers should be. And I don't really like, um, what's her name, Grace Slick? Mm. But she said something once that I thought was totally correct. The fifty-year-olds who are doing rock and roll should quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, so I get a lot of music submitted to me from the United States, and I play them sometimes. I was going to ask, how do you find the scene? How do you tap into the scene? Or do they, do they find you at this point? Well, that's a, that's a kind of a weird question. You know, I a lot of Japanese bands send me their music, but it took it took, and I'm serious, decades. To get to that point because it used to be i'd, I'd go up, go to see a live show and i'd see a band and i'd say hey 
I'm a DJ. Here's my card. Send me your music. I'll play it. And they would never send me their music mm. ever. And and I think they just thought like, um, well, he's a FM radio DJ. They're not going to play it anyway. Mm. And so they wouldn't send me the music. But it's mm. just been recently, and word has gotten out that Mike Rogers will play our music. And so now a lot of Japanese bands send me their music. But also a lot of American, UK bands send me their music too. It's it's really, um, it's nice to get a really cool song from the States. Yeah. And with a, actually a young band, that's really nice. But um, I often get like, you know, gospel or um, just, <laughs> it's like, do you listen to my show? Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm about. <laughs> We're talking to Mike. Rogers, Mike in Tokyo. Uh, he's got a film out I want to send you to called Ghost Roads, a Japanese rock and roll ghost story. Okay, here's what it's about. Tell me this does not sound entertaining. A struggling rock musician meets a ghost in a haunted amplifier who promises fame and fortune. The musician gets everything he ever dreamed of, but not exactly the way he hoped. Uh, I saw that that's, uh, you can, you can look, you can find that streaming right now. Um, not on Hulu. What's the other voodoo or something? I, I, I forget. I, it, yeah. Well, it's on Tubi. Tubi. And, yeah. Tubi. Uh, Amazon Prime. Or yeah. Something. And it premiered in 2017 at the Rain Dance Festival. So film festival. Yeah. So congratulations. Uh, again, where you can find, listen to this man. I mean, he's, he brings out, he, he introduces the world to such great indie music uh mike in tokyo broadcast out of tokyo japan you can find him on instagram at mike in tokyo rogers and on facebook at mike in tokyo rogers one but mike in tokyo rogers will probably work and you can find him on these are a few of the digital radio stations uh it's the mike rogers show in japan broadcasting out of japan monday wednesday and fridays 12 p.m. Radio Candy Radio Station Core W W F M U in New Jersey, and Lux Radio in Spain. That's just a few of the 55 stations that he broadcasts from. Uh, also, go check out FilmFreeway.com, Japan Indies Film Festival. It's a film festival that Mike Rogers founded. So we'll be right back. Oh, Mike! Uh, by the way, we're going. Mm to break here with that's the way woman is the messengers yeah. i really like this song for some reason i loved i just loved it why did you choose this song and tell us about the messengers um the messengers are two girls i think they're from utsunomiya which is a little city outside of tokyo and if you listen closely to the song she warbles her voice and that really reminds me of eartha kit uh. Because Eartha Kitt used to sing, you know, I'm an old-fashioned girl, like that. <laughs> so she warbles her voice like that. And i that's the only person I've ever heard do that, besides Eartha Kitt. And um, a very famous Japanese singer um, named Misora Hibari. So she's following in the footsteps of some really greats. And it's it's a really nice melodic song. Yeah, I enjoy it. Here it is. That's the way woman is, the messengers. We'll be right back. Clear standby. Sorry, I went a little long there, Dr. D. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dr. D's waving at me, and I'm just I don't want to oh. keep talking to you, Mike. We don't have we don't have Toyota yet, so we don't need to take a break right on time, do we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want Kia. When we get Toyota. I'll bring I, whatever I'll you tell me you, to. Wait a minute. I'll bet you guys can go to your local Toyota dealer. Because I think they're, uh, what do you call it, franchised. Mm -hmm. And you just offer them some really cheap deal. And they take it. And then you get Toyota on your show. And then you just go show that to other sponsors. Hey, well, you know, we got Toyota yeah. on the show. And, and that really makes people sit up and p pay attention. All right. Yeah, well, I'm going to just say Mike, Mike in Tokyo sent us. That's right. There you go. Mike in Tokyo. <laughs> Mike in Tokyo says you'll sign up. Absolutely. All right. We're ready. Uh, all right. Here we go. We Three. got lots of cover, man. I got to I gotta move it along, move myself along here. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. Uh, Mike, actually, I wanted you to bring us back. Can you do your thing? I, I told you one time at least. Can you can you bring bring us back to the 
to your show, not my show. Bring us just bring us in here and uh, the way you would do it. And then introduce um, the song that you sent me, Kelly Muff, New Trash. Okay, yeah. Um, it's the Mike Rogers show with you. We just heard from blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Next up, here's Kelly Muff. <laughs> Love it. Why did you choose the song? <laughs> oh, she she is. Um, that song reminds me of 1960s San Francisco. You know, maybe the Jefferson Airplane or something like that. She can scream and she's always on key and it's very different than typical Japanese rock. She She sounds like an American even though she's singing in Japanese and she's really pretty. Don't tell, don't mention that. Cut that part out. My wife might. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all, uh, you know, you were right when you mentioned that you think the rock and rollers, you've got that image in your, well, I think we all do with this rock and rock and roll. You know, it's that almost that heroin chic kind of a thing that, that just you're, you're thin, you're, you're edgy. You look like you've probably been up a few nights, but you, you did your makeup right. But you're also attractive, you know. That's part yeah. of the packaging. It's pa It's in a way, I hate to say it, but it's packaging. It's we all, you know, we 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 strive or we emulate or we want to be, especially when you're younger, you want to be that rock star that you've got on your poster on your wall, right? Yeah. You, you, After I was in the Rodders and then I moved to Japan, those guys in that band played reunion concerts every year and i'm serious for probably 30 years they played reunion concerts and they would always ask me mike mike come back we're playing a big show in long beach or something like that and i never went back once and i i just told them you know i don't think old fat guys <laughs> should be playing punk rock but the, the guitarist, he had a good point. He said, no, no, it's offensive, right? Old fat guys playing punk rock. And I said, yeah. He said, well, that's why we do it. <laughs> True to their, their beginnings, your beginnings, right? Just yeah. uh, keep, keep shocking, keep yeah, keep, uh, keep But, you know, it was a good memory, and I just want to keep it that way. I just, yeah, that's smart, though. Think... You know, you can't go back sometimes. I'll yeah. It, it, From I, a... I like from your DJ perspective, from an FM DJ perspective, from the career that you've had, how has the job description changed over the years or has it? Yeah, it's totally changed. And um, it used to be like in Japan, it's like I said, things are very behind, like 30, 40 years. In Japan, at most uh, radio station, there's a director, an engineer, and an assistant director and then there's the DJ, and the DJ just talks. And the director or the writer, screenwriter writes the script for him. So oh, their wow. their their talent, it's like you know, 1940s or 50s radio, right, wow. Richard? So um, that's how it is in this country. Wow. So when I st so I had always you know enjoyed being the engineer and the director and co-hosting. So I used to do that. Uh, I, I would, I would run the board, and I would like direct, and I would co-host, and put the music in, and I did everything, and I thank God for that because, in the new radio, the the new internet radio, it seems, a lot of people, um, are doing everything by themselves, and able to run the board, able to mix music, you know, <laughs> and make everything sound okay. So Richard. You got a job in the future, Jeremiah. I don't know about you. No, I, I need Richard. I definitely you know, need Dr. D. You know, it's interesting you describe that because that has been my whole career since 1979. I was always told, learn everything you can about every single department in the business. And then in a few years, they didn't specify how many, you can then work on specializing. Uh, I... I have my own program. All right. Yeah. I am both the producer. I am the director. I am the host. <clears throat> I am the researcher. I am the webmaster. Mm -hmm. I am the podcaster, the video caster. You t put whatever name you want on there. I'm not the advertiser, uh, the advertising agent, so to speak, because, you know, I I'm just in spite of the fact that I've been told I could sell ice cubes to Eskimos uh, <laughs> by my father. 
I, it's just not something that I have really dove into in spite of how good I was at sales in high school as a paper boy, as well as bargain network over here in, in Goleta when I first moved here in 2006. But I, you know, it's just, and, and it's not, I'm not saying this with any ego. Uh, I basically do everything around here except for the sales department. You're hired. I handle, I handle the traffic. <laughs> okay. I handle the logs you know, and on and on and on. Uh, fortunately, there are others that are stepping in to do some of the production, but I still mm -hmm. love doing the production. Even with this program, it's just a lot of fun for me. I just, it's, it's a blast. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's good. So you, you will always have a job. Yeah. And I, I suspect that you may not want to do it, but you, you could do the, the sales too. I could. Oh, cool. I yeah. mean, when I was a paper boy, I've took many trips to Disneyland because I was one of the top salesmen every, you know, in a quarter uh, for su su uh, newspaper subscriptions back in Phoenix. I worked for Bargain Network. And in the last three or four weeks that I was there, they moved me into with a bunch of other people into what we, they called the fishbowl. It was a raised area that was enclosed with glass. They fed us lunch. And as long as we kept our sales up, we got to stay there. And that's where I was. I still have all of the spreadsheets for the sales that I did. I mean, I was very successful in spite of the fact that I hated the job because it just didn't <laughs> feel right. But I was so good. And that's why my father says, Richard, you could sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Don't worry in about it. Case so you when we tuned in. This is a job interview with Dr. D. <laughs> We're getting his full resume. <laughs> Do you guys mind? Let me get back to Mike in Tokyo. Uh, Richard, you are hired, by the way. Thank you. Thank I, you very I, much. It's impressive. Um, after, after we get done with this interview, I'm going to find out what your, you think your strongest points are. About ah, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are your worst points? What are your best points? I, I just wanted to ask uh, Mike, what about the technology in Japan? You say that that from a a staffing position and, and the way they're doing things, the way they do things, it's 30 to 40 years back, right? Yeah, it what is. What about technology? Um, most stations broadcast their, I don't want to get too technical, but broadcast their signal in MP3. And the studios still use uh, CDs. Most, okay. most studios do not use a database. So... Um, of the five stations in Tokyo, I mean, I, I, I've actually been, I am very proud to say I have been fired from every radio station in Tokyo. Really? Yeah. So you've been fired five times. No more. <laughs> Those are the kind of resumes I want to read. Like, That's the, right. The, yeah. the last station, which is, okay, there's, there's Tokyo FM, there's um, NHK, there's... Um, uh, J Wave, and there's um, Inter FM, and then there's NHK, which okay. is a government run. All so, right. I, I've been fired from Tokyo FM, J Wave, uh, and whatever. But Inter FM, I've been fired from that station five times. Oh my gosh! And Wait they a keep minute, hiring me back. I was just going to ask. Okay, you were fired. Apparently, it wasn't bad enough that they would rehire you. Well. The station has a lot of problems and management keeps changing. So like this management would fire me and then new management would come in and they'd hire me back. Oh, wow. So, um, but, but then the new management would fire you again. <laughs> yeah. They, they would fire me again because I'm not the kind of, I'm, I'm not corporate material. You guys. Hey, no, I hear you. Neither that's am I. why your fans yeah. love you. That's, that's right. Why, that's why you're good at what you do. You're great yeah. at what you do. I have to say but, this. I've been I've not been fired from any of my radio jobs. I was laid off once. You're oh. really fired, Dr. D. We don't need to I know, I know. <laughs> hey, let me let me talk about this meet the pumps. Yeah. This is really great. Okay. Meet it's, the pumps. Let me tell you a little bit about it, Dr. D. A gritty yes. feature set in the world of punk music, the okay. Grammy, Golden Globe, and Critics Choice Award nominee Linda Perry's on board as a composer, music supervisor, and executive executive producer um the film was penned by um the director and that's Stephen brooks correct yes Stephen brooks and mike in tokyo our special guest today rogers he's uh he penned it as well he centers this film centers on an all-female la punk band the pumps a real band examining the rise fall and ultimate resurrection 
of their charismatic lead singer, Antoine Tony Sabo. Uh, so Linda Perry, you know, if you, you, you got to remember the name from the, the, the song, the hit song, What's Up, way back when, but still, I, we played it not that long ago on the, on the show here, and man, it's just a great song. Um, Four Non Blondes, the alternative rock band. Yeah, you know, hit. you know, Jeremiah, that I, I co-wrote that song with Linda Perry. Did you really? Seriously? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, she's got a lot of, I didn't realize this about her, Linda Perry. Um, but you're working with her. That's close. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Right? Linda Perry's subsequent credits as a songwriter and producer include charts hoppers such as Pink's Get the Party Started, Christina Aguilera's Beautiful, Hurt, and Candyman, Alicia Keys' Superwoman, Gwen Stefani's What You Waiting For, and Wonderful Life, even Courtney Love, Letter to God, Kelly Osborne, One World, Celine Dion, My Love, mm. James Blunt's No Bravery, among so many others. I didn't realize that she had done so much and was such a prolific songwriter for other artists. She's also founded two record labels, Rockstar Records and Custard Records, and won two ASCAP awards for her songwriting. She was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2015. What a great person to work for. And then Mike, Mike, uh, you know, your music credentials are brought to this project. Um, and wow, it sounds really, really interesting. Tell me a little bit about Meet the Pumps. And oh, okay. Well, Richard, you want to say something? No. No. Okay. Well, um, he's already been hired. He, he's oh, okay. Okay. He got, okay. I, I'm marking down here. You owe me lunch. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got nothing. So, so, um, so the, uh, the pumps in a in a word it's a hard day's night with a faustian twist mm. faustian Which, yeah so um it's actually i made ghost roads and um it it was just a pain in the in the can i say ass pain in the butt um because um <laughs> The, the, people both, were so fighting. <laughs> the, the people were fighting all the time oh, and i would have these japanese call me up in the middle of the night just screaming at me you know about the director or the the, the, the director of photography or whatever and i realized at that time i can't talk back to anyone i have to listen to them and i would just listen to them for like an hour screaming at me in um, a, a dialect that's from Osaka, and I couldn't understand a word they were saying. And um, I would just let them yell at me until they got tired and then calm down and just told them, okay, I'll take care of it tomorrow. But anyway, so mm -hmm. a guy, a guy uh, contacted me one day and he said, I want to remake that movie. And I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do it. And he said, no, no, listen to me. Um, I've got, you know this director and i have linda perry and don't don't tell anyone but like i was like who's linda perry and um i remember you wrote her song <laughs> <laughs> i know you do so much mike <laughs> so so um linda perry came into the project and i i looked her up and you know that video what's what's going on or what's up that has 1.4 billion views wow wow so, I know. I was just like, what? I've added at least four. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she came on and I've had several Zoom calls with her. She's really nice. She's not conceited at all, but a very business-like person. And um, I think she can tell when people are trying to bullshit her because, you know, she told me, yeah, right, Mike, and then hung up on me. No. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Mike, by the way, you can say ass you can say butt but you can't say bullshit <laughs> okay richard has to clean up the three now mm -hmm. and mine so she's she's joined the project and <laughs> i can't announce it yet because of her we have a british supermodel who is going to be the main part and this woman is very super famous everyone knows who she is and she has starred in movies too mm -hmm. great so, actress yeah so um, I think they're going to announce that pretty soon, but I, I'm pretty happy about that. And then I, you know, um, I wrote 
the original for Miss, uh, Meet the Pumps and then rewrote the script with Steven. And then just the other day I got hired by another guy who made a movie called Schemers that won a lot of awards uh, to write that script. And, hmm. you know, you got to keep doing. We got to keep doing. got to keep moving. Well, well, yeah, and to keep from going bankrupt. Well, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. As Mike says, I make rock and roll stuff. We got to take one more break, Dr. D. Yes, sir. And we'll come back and we'll, uh, we're going to have to say goodbye to you, but not okay. before Mike, you know, we'll be sad about saying goodbye, but it won't be forever. Uh, not before we talk about the Jap uh, Japan Indies Film Festival. You know what you kind of remind me of, Mike? And I, you're like the, um, you know, that director who does a lot of music videos, um, John. Oh my God, I'm going to forget his name now. Um, Wayne. What's that? John Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, you're like him too. <laughs> um, no, uh, before this, I got to look it up here now because I got to I gotta finish my, well, I'll, I'll tell you on the other side of the break, but you're like this, this great director who does a lot of rock and roll movies and, and I always enjoy his stuff. Um, so again, find Mike, you can find him everywhere at 55 radio stations. Where Throw a dart, you'll hit one. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 p.m. P, uh, PDT time, Radio Candy, Radio Station Core, Radio WFMU, New Jersey, LUX, Lux Radio Spain. You can find Mike at on Facebook at Mike in Tokyo Rogers and a Mike in Tokyo Rogers on Instagram as well. We'll be right back. Clear. Okay. You know what, Mike? I forgot to ask you. We just look, we took it Minnesota Minnesota Voodoo Men for your love. We just went out yeah. to break with that. So maybe we'll mention that on the back on the way in. Taxi Man. Maybe the next three songs just tell us that Taxi Man and then uh Ibon Cherry. I really like that. The let goes. Is it yeah. Ibon? Yeah. Hey Bon. Hey Bon. It means average cherry. Okay. I like that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and, and cherry, I think cherry means what it means in slang in the States. It's the same. So it's just an average cherry. Okay. John Carney, that's the director. God, I oh. can't believe I, I just watched that. You, have you seen his movies? Begin yeah. again. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I like I like he focuses on new music, indie music, rock and roll. I think you do it a little bit harder. A little harder edge there okay whenever you're ready dr right, d here we did go. you clean those up i'm sorry about that i will i've got them marked so i will <laughs> clean them up before we go any further in three two one welcome back to the jeremiah show our final segment for now with mike in tokyo <clears throat> it must be what 6 30 there almost in tokyo yeah That's almost fun. 6 30 in the morning your coffee got cold but you can almost you're almost free to go get another one the Minnesota, Minnesota Voodoo Men for your yes. love. We we went out, we took you out to break with the, the Minnesota Voodoo Men. Why'd you choose this band, Mike? Um, they're a, a garage band that's been playing in Japan for I think about ten years. And um, like I said, Japanese bands don't even get played on the radio here. And so I started playing them, and their reaction has been really, really good. And like that, we played For Your Love. That is some heavy, that is a very heavy cover of that song. Yeah. And I really like that. And, and then we came back with Taxi Man. Taxi Man. Taxi Man is a band from Tokyo called Sakuran Zensen. And this is a very rare case. An indies band who got so popular so fast, they were signed by Sony Records. Now, the problem is Sony, Warner, Universal, whatever, have a, a knack for screwing up something that's really cool. And <laughs> these guys, they, they signed with Sony, and a year later, they, they quit and never released a record. So it kind of reminds me of the Sex Pistols or something like that. Um, and I think signing with Sony has ruined the band reputation amongst each other hmm. and what i hear through the grapevine is they've broken up or they've taken a break for a while but i'm sure when they got signed to sony they were really excited and thought this is it we've made it and then sony like i said screws things up and then now they get they 
they quit the label and they're probably all wondering, you know, their midlife crisis while they're 20 years old. Mm. Well, that sounds like a perfect comeback story there. Yeah. By the way, uh, to mention that that director, just to finish this thought on there, uh, John Carney was who I was trying to compare you to. I know uh, you're you're a lot you're the heavier writer director. I would I would say the punk and the, the some of the band some of the stuff that you put out there. I hope you don't mind that comparison. No, no, that's fine. Um, okay, so Mike we've got to move on you know we've got to say goodbye unfortunately we do have radio airtime we got to fit into this little box and i don't do it very well either um i wanted just to point out uh, at the pump official on instagram you can go check out the pumps um they're an la female rock, pop rock band there's new music coming soon and you can also check them out at the pumps official.com mike is uh wrote meet the pumps and we can't wait to to for that to go into production and then to see that mike so we'll have to have you back when that comes comes okay. out um if if you if you will come back the jack I will. <laughs> japan <laughs> indies film festival you're the founder you uh, tell us about that here before we well say okay to you. okay so i'll try to make this really quick so the japanese film industry is really screwed up and it's controlled by a, a group of good old boys. And these good old boys don't want any indies film, filmmakers, even Japanese people coming into their group. So they hate me. I hate them. It's okay. And um, <laughs> now I'm starting to, it's starting to make sense. The uh, non-corporate. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> lifestyle. I, I started it and I contacted Rain Dance and Rain Dance, you know, generally does things their own way and really fair and mm -hmm. honest scoring. Like, for example, the Tokyo International Festival. Of course, I don't want to say anything bad about them, but if you're a filmmaker and you want your film in Tokyo Film Festival, the International Film Festival, they won't accept you. They only accept films from their friends. Hmm. Mm. And they'll only show films from their friends and they, they give awards to their friends. And that's why no Japanese film festival is in the top 200 of the world circuit. So I kind of thought like, okay, well, might as well go. I mean, it's not toe to toe, toe to Goliath against these people and, and try to make something so that independent filmmakers can have a place to show what they want to do. And we're very fair about judging and we don't do any of this, uh, I don't know what you call it, but you know, buddy, buddy, good old boy thing. Yeah, you're in. You'll win a trophy. I generally don't accept films from people who are my friends. And the um, work speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah. So fair. it's fair. It's a fair festival. Yeah, it, it's very fair. And, um, <laughs> but it'll take 10 or 15 years for that to become big. This is only our fifth year. And we got, we did get a write up. We did get a write-up that's saying, you know, the top 10 film festivals in Asia, and we were ranked number three. Wow, congratulations. I, I couldn't believe it. Hmm. Wow, that's well, great. Check it out, filmfreeway.com backslash Japan Indies Film Festival. Um, when is the festival, Mike? Um, in December, uh, I think December 15th or something like that. And so are you accepting submissions now? Yes, Okay. Where do they please send those submit, to? Please. Yeah, we submit. Uh, we accept short films, music videos, feature films, documentaries. Whatever. Where do they send them to, Mike? Oh, they just go on to filmfreeway.com. Okay, right there. Okay. And then search for Japan Indies Film Festival, J-I-F-F, -F, and um, you can enter there. Mike, Mike and Chuck. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So <laughs> I'll make it right now that yeah. if you... If you write in Jeremiah, you get a 10% discount. Ooh, isn't that? See, that, what, is that okay to do be, that? I, I love like that. It. See, uh, being a member has its advantages. Uh, advantages. That's right. Just like American Express. That's right. So it'll be Jeremiah all <laughs> The Jeremiah all. Show, just like American Express. That's right. Um, oh, Jeremiah Show? Without it. The Jeremiah Show, yeah. yes. Don't leave or, home without it. Don't, don't, don't okay. leave home without us. Uh, one last question, Mike. Thanks for that generous offer to our listeners. And Mike, uh, one last question for you. You ever plan on moving to Italy? 
<laughs> no, because, and I, this is serious, I hear, you know, in Japan, you can walk around the streets here, and I love Japan, there's no crime, there's, there's no trash in the streets, and there's no trash cans in the streets. Because in Japan, the custom is if you, you have trash, you're supposed to put it in your pocket and take it home and then throw it away. Hmm. But I hear in Italy, there's dog poo poo all over the sidewalks. <laughs> and, and that just disgusts me. If uh, our Italian listeners, if you want to confirm or deny that, that's right. Mike, <laughs> email Mike. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> but I, no, I, I heard. No, I asked that question because, in case you just tuned in in the beginning, Mike, one of your dreams was you're going to go to Japan for two years and yeah. then move to Italy. So, no, you're going to stay in Japan. That's that's your, yeah, your that's right. home. Maybe come home yeah. to see uh, us in Ventura in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mike, it's been so much fun talking to you and uh, I hope to check in with you a lot more and find and follow the best indie bands. I mean, uh, you, your show is amazing. Mike in Tokyo. Again, you can find it on 55 stations. You're, you're a, an international superstar to us and I'm sure to the bands that you promote. Thank you for all you do, Mike. Thank you. All right, everybody. You know what's coming next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Communicate. Listen more and evolve. Have a great week, everybody. You're clear. Mike, I got to, I, I want to bow to you. <laughs> Can we do that on, uh, do that on uh, our YouTube channel? Sure. <laughs> okay, then I better proper bow. <laughs> I know I didn't do a very proper bow either. <clears throat> but that's okay. Very good. I, I tell you. Thank you. I, I want to learn the Japanese culture. So maybe I can hire you to be my, my personal interpreter. Oh, interpreter. I've, I've been the advisor to like big company presidents like um, Domino's Pizza. I became the advisor to um, Delta Airlines president, the president of Tower Records back in the day. Mm. I met that guy Solomon too, a couple of times. Yeah. Solomon? And yeah, the guy who founded Tower Records. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, there's a documentary on the, on him. Yeah. yeah. That documentary is a bunch of bullshit. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> See, I want to go to you for the real opinions on things. That's right. <laughs> well, tell me about, Mike, smell this out for me. Is this okay? Is this kosher? Is this right? <clears throat> um, hey, we got to get you to do a radio drop in your, your own thing. Promote your show, and we'll drop it into our our, our uh, master. Yeah. So, uh, something like, hi, it's Mike in Tokyo, Rogers, or just Mike in Tokyo, whatever you want to say. Listen to me here. Um, the Mike Rogers show, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then you're listening to the Jeremiah show. All you right. Let me see that now. Yeah. Yeah. We're I'm, Richard. Oh, okay. Count you down. I'll count you down. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Mike Rogers, and you're listening to the Mike Rogers Show right here on the the Jeremiah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Mike Rogers Show. Yeah, thank. Okay, but see ya. Sorry, I, I just like my that. mic off. I'm sorry. I, I like that. that. That was good. Did I ruin it by laughing? No, no, no. Your no, mic was off. Okay, Our mics were off. Okay. No problem. I love that. That was great. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, you guys, one time slash was on our a guest on our show and we had him do an id like that and slash was like um okay you know i was like okay here you go three two one go and he's like yeah this is slash and um i uh, can i do that again and i thought that's perfect that's perfect <laughs> that's perfect that's all we need that's so way we broadcast more fun. that for a long it is. time it really is it really is <laughs> i love that oh. well mike thank you man i appreciate it beautiful beautiful man beautiful okay glad to glad to get to know you yeah glad to get you i'm sorry to make you guys wait hey let's, no worries let's keep uh, keep in touch it was worth sure. it it was absolutely worth it okay thank you all right. All right. Thanks, Mike. Later. Have a good, Bye. good day. Bye-bye. Okay. Let me go over here and then over here and we'll close Funny this. Guy.